Once again, YouTube, we are here with another budget deck discussion. Now, the first budget deck discussion we did was Mega Colony, which I recorded yesterday. For all of you guys, you probably were watching it the same day in a row, or multiple times, in, or multiple days in uh, distance, whatever. Who cares? Really, all you're wanting to know is what are these budget decks, how much do they cost, what is in them, and why are they really cheap? So, while Gold Paladins got a lot of support back in the set, uh, I want to say around set 6 or 7, till about set 15, uh, 16, 17, they got a lot of support in there. They were probably one of the most supported clans in the game up until then. So it wasn't like there was just support flooding for every other clan. They probably have the most support. But we all of a sudden recently have started seeing a change. Gold Paladin got one set that it was supported in. Wasn't a lot of great support either, that's the thing. But it got some support. Now, I'm here to tell you about a budget deck you can run and not have to give up anything for the deck. Now, you normally, now you'll be hearing me talk about the perfect guard. The perfect guard is the main key of the deck. Normally, when I say a G deck, you're thinking, oh, you want to play the unflip perfect guard and everything like that. For this deck, you do not play the unflip perfect guard. You don't counter blast that much from what I've seen. And with Gurgle skill, you're really guarding from the top of your deck. So, and you're guarding with your cards from your field and from your deck. So why would I want a card that says it has to be put on guard circle from hand when I can perfect guard for something that I can use from my deck? Just a thought. But the deck, as well as the Mega Colony, um... It costs the same amount as the Mega Colony, around eighty, ninety dollars. After all, punched into TCGPlayer.com. You can run. This deck doesn't sacrifice on everything, on anything actually. Um, from what I've seen, there isn't any promos that I would run in the deck. Maybe you'd want to play a promo instead of the 10K, but I prefer the 10K. Calling from deck so much that you're going to want a good solid card you can put in front of you, in the front row instead of all of a sudden, oh, I have this 8k out, but I don't have a card to support it, so it's never going to hit anything. Well, I'd rather play a 10k that's like, ooh, it gets a trigger. Yay. And the 12k. But that's besides the point. So we're going to go over each of the cards in the deck, what its purpose is in the deck, and go from there. So obviously, once you go to your card fight, Vanguard database app you are looking at um, going through the filters finding all the G sets collect and clicking on them and then click on gold paladin at this point you have four of each trigger revealed to you so cr four create four stand four draw four heal of course you're gonna put four of each of them in but here's why instead of finding just another crit trigger you can just play the sand trigger and not have to give up anything it's skill Put it on the top of the deck. When another unit is placed on rear guard circle, shuffle your deck, draw a card, give the unit that was called 5,000 power. So, with how much you're calling in the deck, why don't you call something that's actually going to do something later on? This is basically, Bruno was, when something is called from the deck, give 3,000 power. This card instead gives you draw power, for one. For two, it gives more power to your rear guards. So that 10k I was telling you about, that 10k is now a 15k after trigger, it's a 20k. Your other card's only going to be an 18k. So facing against a 13k, you're looking at a uh, hard to a few things that are going to be a little bit better. So at this point, there you go. Now we're playing Rising Lionette. It's the only starter that came out in the G sets. It's a common. But it has a pretty neat skill. When another card is placed on rear guard circle, put him into the soul. The unit called gets 5,000 power, and when its attack hits, counter blast one. Look at top three cards of your deck, call one to rear guard. 
doesn't have to be to an open rear guard, just to a rear guard. Now, this is amazing because of the fact that this is now... G Gold Paladins back when they were Liberators were all about call to an open rear guard, call to an open rear guard. Fill up your rear guard spaces without giving up anything. Now it's more of a call, 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 pressure, apply, boom. I don't know. Uh, you're going to play four Dawning Night Gorbaduck. It's a single rare. It searches up uh, Gurgle it and it's a stride enabler. Uh, you're going to play four Halo Shield Mark. Now, if you look at your Gold Paladin Perfect Guard that said, oh, by the way, you have to call it from hand. Like, here, I'll read the actual effect to you real quick. Uh, Holy Mage Bridery. Skill. When it, when this unit is placed on Guard Circle from hand, discard one card, nullify an attack, and if there's another version in your damage zone, turn it face up. Now, in this deck, you do, superior, you do call from the deck, but you also guard from the deck. So, you don't exactly want to get rid of different cards and have a perfect guard that just gets wasted because of the fact that you're guarding for zero with a perfect guard and you end up not being able to use its skill at all, any of it. So, rather use Mark, whose skill is when it's placed on guard circle, you, may pay, you discard one card, nullify an attack. And he's cheaper by a, about, about a dollar or two. So, there's uh, multiple pluses on the deck for running Mark. Uh, you're gonna run two Slamy. Um, it's common. Retire it at the beginning of a guard step. If the number of other rear guards you have is three or more, look at the top three cards of your deck. Call one for guard circle is rest and shuffle your deck. This is a really like bonus. Um, you run two of Slamy. Basically, just when your opponent attacks, get rid of them. Hope for on the top three is a perfect guard. This gives you, oh, I counterblasted one and I called Slay Me. What am I going to do with this? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to guard with it. How are you going to guard with it? You're going to use its skill. Of course, it's not your main concern to use it, but it's still a pretty neat card. Let's see your point. One second, I gotta find, um, now, there are a lot of cards you can play, but next, we're going to play three Kugel. Kugel has a skill when it's placed on the rear guard circle from your deck, draw a card. So this is actually pretty nice, and it is the only promo that's in the deck, but literally, you call so much, why don't you get some draw power in the middle of it? You gotta call things from your hand in order to call things from your deck. Therefore, you've got a plus somehow. Call something from hand, counter blast one, get more power in your field, and get, keep your hand at the same size. So in this deck, your hand isn't taking as much of a hit as is going down. And is staying around the same and probably, hopefully improving since you're guarding from your deck. Now, moving on to the grade twos. Holy Mage Poil. I know, the name is really weird. It's spelled P-W-Y-L-L, -L, but it's Poil. Now, he ha he's your generic, every clan's getting them. When it's, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if it was boosted, counter blast one, do something specific for the clan. This one is, look at the top three cards, call one from among it, and shuffle your deck. Pretty basic, but... Unlike those other ones that needed to hit in order to do it, or needed a Liberator Vanguard in order to do it, and then you had to put them to the bottom of the deck, this one shuffles the deck up. I'm not too... I don't like the shuffling, and it doesn't require it doesn't require to call to an open rear guard either. So you can have cards in your rear guard. Attack. Attack with him. Counterblast one. Call another card to the rear guard. You don't need a rear guard. You don't have to have a non-existing rear guard in order to do it. You can have an existing rear guard and just call over it. Now, of course, you're going to put four of the 10K, Knight of Dawn White Jago. Um, he's also a common. Uh, you're going to play Cloten. Also, um, Poil. Holy Mage Poil is a double rare. So, just for those of you that don't know. Law Abiding Knight Cloten. He Generation Brick 1 when he attacks 3,000 power. This works really well. With how much you call from the deck, you're going to want 
a nice, like, instead of a 9k attacker that's going to attack and have some weird skill that really won't benefit you in the long run, you want to have a nice attack, solid attacker that can attack. Next we're going to have Lofty Head Lion. We're moving on to our grade 3s. This is a common grade 3. Generation Break 1. When another unit is called from the rear guard uh, to rear guard from deck, he gains 3,000 power. This is only good on the Vanguard Circle though, so he's a good backup grade 3 to run in case you can't run ride to your main grade 3 Sunrise Ray Knight Gurglet. But at the same time, a few drawbacks. Uh, he only gains 3,000 power, which in my experience, 3,000 never helps anything. 5,000 helps, 10,000 helps, 3,000 is just a waste of time. Uh, then, But his second ability isn't bad. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. When you place on Vanguard Circle, look at top 4 cards of your deck, call one from among them. Not too bad. Um, but that's only when you place on Vanguard Circle, so it's not too great either. If it was when you placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, you could literally just call him Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, call another card, and strengthen your rear guard a little bit better and that would be a top four that would be great you'd have four options to call to the rear guard or you could just send them all to the or, or you could just all shuffle them all into your deck if you don't like the card if you like the cards that you just sent to the bottom of the deck and you want to give them a chance to be in your drive check later definitely use it that his that skill is definitely be useful but because of the fact that it doesn't say rear guard you can't use his ability there now, your main grade 3, uh, and I was surprised when I saw that his price was, was, he was, the, he's the most expensive card on the deck. And, he's not even that expensive. His SP version is like $12. His triple rare is maybe 4 maybe $5. So, if you're looking to trade for a deck and you've got like an $160 deck, probably pick this deck up and something, and some extra cards up. Not a bad idea. It's not a bad deck. But let's read Gurglet's ability. Uh, Counter Blast 1, Generation Break 2. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. At the beginning of your guard step that he's being attacked, we'll get four cards from the top of your deck, call one to guard circle, and shuffle the rest of the deck. So this one maximizes your possibilities for a heal trigger in your deck. It takes cards out of your deck and puts your heal triggers and shuffles them in. And two, it gives you a chance to get that perfect guard we talked about. So you can perfect guard from deck, you can shuffle heals, um, around your deck, you can shuffle more stuff around your deck, you can improve draw power, it's, there's just a lot to it. Now, the next part is a little shocking, because 2000 power does help as well, just so you know, but his next skill is when you stride, counter blast one, look at top four cards from your deck, call one, give it 2000 power, shuffle the rest of the deck. Now, this is pretty neat. Because 2,000 power, let's say I call my 9k. I now have a 15 attacker. Normally that wouldn't be a good thing, but let's say um, I have my 10k. I need another 1,000 or two just to attack my, van my opponent's vanguard for equal and make them have to throw out a 5k shield. Why don't I just throw out my, uh, call it with Gurgle it, give it, have a 12k attacker and attack your vanguard and you have to throw it on a 5k shield less likely to guard against other attacks later. Now, moving on to the strides, I am not using any Scourge Point Dragon. I know most people would probably slap me for that, but him being a 3 or $4 card compared to just running 4 of Camel, it's a plus. It, it Yes, you. And I told you you wouldn't have to sacrifice anything, but here's why. Because of the fact that when I call things from my deck, it's mainly because of the fact I'm using my Vanguard skill. Scourge Point is for decks that call from deck without requiring a Vanguard skill. This deck heavily relies on your Vanguard skill calling. You have two cards that call from your deck besides your strides. That's Gurgoit and Plyle. Everything else is uh, response to being called from deck. Power or powers up when called from deck or something like that. Your grade four. Uh, generic 15k. When he attack, he gains the power of your vanguard. He's a stride. But his skill. When this unit attacks a vanguard. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Search for one front card from among them. Call it to rear guard. 
and shuffle them all into your deck and give the unit called 2000 power. You had another chance to you stand your rear guard in your back row or your front row, look at top five cards of your deck, call the one missing, give it 2000 power, you have a strengthen up and another whole entire row attacking, or you can stand one of your other rear guards, stand another and have th uh, two new attacks, depending on the power of your, that you have already down. Now, here's where the deck really gets its call power. Let's say you're playing Kagero and they just nuke your field. You have no field whatsoever. You're literally sitting here with a Vanguard. Now, here's where Golden Dragon, Spear Cross Dragon enters the fray. I know, I'm quoting the anime here, but forgive me. Skill. When it's placed on Vanguard, Counter Blast 2, flip uh, one of Golden Dragon, Spear Cross Dragon face up if you already have one or more face up G cards. Now, in your G zone. Now, after this, you look at the top five cards of your deck. Now, for each card you have face up in the G zone, call one of them the separate rear guard. So at this point, you've already flipped another spear crossover. So that leaves you with at least two face up in your G zone. So you're at least calling two cards at this moment for his effect. Or you can use Stry you can use Campbell two or three times and maximize on Spear Cross Dragon's ability. But most of the time, you want to have two Campbells face up, spear cross, you have three cards you can choose to call from your five, send any triggers and back into the deck, and call cards from your deck. Now, here's the downside to this deck. It does lack in drawing power, most likely it's going to use a lot of cards from hand, but it gives power, and it's only until on a turn. But instead of sending them to the bottom of the deck and, mem and just memorizing, oh, I sent all of these triggers to the bottom of the deck instead of um, shuffling them into the deck, and now I'm like, don't know where they are. No, they're in the bottom. Of the they were in the bottom of the deck. Now you're looking at shuffling them into the deck. You're probably gonna pull that same trigger that you just saw when you revealed cards and called. You're probably gonna see that same trigger in your drive check. Now, of course, you could find a legion that would be useful for him. But, I don't see a legion that you could possibly use. Um, let's see. Why don't we just find out? So, I'm going to look at all of the legions right now in front of you, and I'm going to find out. Is there a legion that you can use in this deck? Uh, a generic legion that does not require a, your vanguard to be a liberator now I will tell you right now though that that calls cards from liberator that calls liberators liberators um, I'm pretty much just going down the list on card fight database and I'm looking at all of the legions besides the liberator blue frame blue flame dragon because he's a tank he has a, he legions with the tank cat not a really interesting skill there. He gains 5k when attacking. Oh my gosh. Uh, Locus Liberator Sclepius requires you to have Liberators to Counterblast. Okay. So, if you really want to and you are really itching to use a Legion, Murasame Liberator Coil. Counterblast 2, Persona Blast when he's in Legion. Top 4 cards of your deck. Call 2. Give him 5,000 and put the other cards in the bottom of the deck. There's that bottom of the deck I was telling you about. And because of the fact that you have him in the deck, you're obviously going to run his mate. And his mate skill is, let's see here, where is he? Um, I'm trying to find it. I'm just letting you guys know. There are options for the deck, but not really good options. Not options that I'd r figure running. Locus Liberator Trihern doesn't require, but it does require Vanguard to be in Legion. So if you want to run it because you feel like you're going to be Legioning more than you're going to be Striding, go ahead. But Shower Liberator Trihern, when it's placed on Rear Guard from deck, if your Vanguard is in Legion, then choose two other units and give them 3,000 power each not a bad skill most likely you're gonna you're gonna not want to call him until all of a sudden you've a, you've stridden a few times you've got a good formation you're missing a card from your deck Le legion use a skill 
get that out. But no matter what, the grade three you're gonna run is stride fodder, and you're gonna ride a gurgle it. So I'd rather just run the other guy, and then just discard discard the other guy for a stride, and not have a grade two spot that's going to be clouded by a card that's not going to be used half the time. My personal opinion, you may decide that you'd rather have a card that you're going to use at least half the time rather than have a 10k that doesn't have a skill or anything, it just is there. But, it's your choice. We're going to talk. So the next video is going to be a budget deck on Darker Regulars. The Darker Regulars isn't the cheapest deck because we already just went over the two cheapest decks that you can make without sacrificing anything. But the it is considerably cheap compared to other decks that I've done. So yes, the deck list will be in the description. I just described every part of this deck to you. So if you don't understand anything, leave a comment and I will try to get back to you on that as soon as I can. So this is Cardfighter Phoenix signing off.